Sumail Invoker is a staple of Dota. So we're going to be looking at his Wex Invoker throughout this game. He's an absolute beast. He's against Chris Luck in this match. If you don't know who he is, infamous mid player, 8th play that TI, absolute beasts. And yeah, we're going to be learning how to play Wex Invoker because it's very, very strong right now. Super common and something you should be implementing into your game, especially if you're an Invoker player. The mid lane role is for star players, which is why at GameLeap.com we designed an in-depth course teaching you every trick and concepts pro players abuse to crush the middle lane. There's no better role than mid to solo carry your ranked games, so hit the discount link in the description below to unlock your unfair advantage. So to start off the match, he's going to be contesting the bounty runes. You're actually pretty good at getting first blood because cold snap is, it, it's relatively decent. It's only three seconds at level one, but it still can be enough control to actually secure first blood if the enemy team overextends. So I recommend going to the off lane and potentially securing the rune. This has become a big trend with a lot of mid laners lately where they actually don't block and they just rather let the wave go. And now the main benefit to Wex Invoker that you need to understand is his ability to regen much better than the majority heroes in Dota, right? Just at level one with quad on he has 5.3 hp regen he has a lot of hp regen which allows him to sustain even if he harasses quite a bit and really there's not too much complex to wax invoker within the landing stage other than that it's just very important like what you need to be doing is constantly just trying to get the last it's what i see a lot of wax invokers make the mistake of is that they just hit their opponent endlessly and don't get last hits or denies at all you notice he's still putting the balance on both while laning you know but when there's no last hit to get what does he do right no last hits or denies he hits him that's the difference between a good harass and bad harass it's really just simply that Next thing to note is that at level 3, you want to make sure that you're taking Quas and instantly invoke Tornado when you hit level 2. These two things are very important because when you get the level 2 in Quas, when he has a Tango going, he has 18.7 HP regen and it's insane. And not too far below that, even when if you don't have a Tango going, right? And, and that's really the strength of the hero. So make sure you're taking the second point in Quas before the second point in Wax, or else you're going to limit a big spike here. Because you notice at this point, he can basically just hit the Pango whenever he wants with very little punish, right? You're just always full HP as long as you're not against some giga heavy harass hero like maybe a lena or a high level quap and really that that's about it like i would love to say more obviously his mechanics are fantastic he has 20 cs and 7 denies at 4 minutes with a hero that has generally low base damage right being in the wex invoker well most of it is mostly his mechanics right i mean Samael just has some of the best mechanics in the game which is something you should be striving for yourself as a mid laner last hitting the deny is a core fundamental of a good mid player but also he goes for you know an early null and an early bassy which gives him quite a bit of damage Next thing he does is he actually contests the 5 minute banner runes, which I really like, only because, you know, he knows he's strong, he's been winning the mid lane, he's level 5, almost 6, and the pango's level 4, so him showing up to this fight is most likely going to secure a kill, and so he goes for the cold snap on the pango, you know, it's one of those things where he's just helping out his team, and I think a lot of mid players, it's not that you have to do this, right, but it can be really, really nice just to, in general, assist your team, you keep them in the right mental state, and, and you know, it's, it's overall quite beneficial. But make sure you're not ganking too much. This has to be the next segment of, of the video, really. The, the, don't gank too much. Because if you gank too much on Wex Invoker, you will lose. You will lose. Your hero, it does scale. Invoker scales very well. I'm sure everyone knows that. However, the issue is on Wex Invoker, you're not the AFK jungling exhort. That's usually not the basis of the hero. So you have to understand, okay, well, then how do I farm? It's strictly lane creeps. You should basically never jungle on Wex Invoker, right? You can maybe take a camp here and there. But throughout the game, you'll see him taking a lot of lane creeps. And I'll be pointing that out. In addition, we're going to see a beautiful setup here. This is the benefit of having like the, the pure setup of Wex Invoker, right? Beautiful arrow coming out of the tornado. I mean, that's just an amazing play from their team. And that's communication. At the high level, you guys have to understand communication and the ability to work with your teammates is it's a really big deal. In fact, it, it can comprise the majority of the outcome of the game. Next up here, we're going to be seeing the first gank of the game. It's around the eight minute mark. And I think he just saw that his team was pretty strong so he decides to hit them up with a quick gank was there anything that that was based upon i don't think anything in particular i believe they knew that there was no wards top so they felt very comfortable running up there but in general the reason why those ganks usually don't work out is they're not based upon any sort of timing whatsoever and you might be like well what's at eight minutes that's not what i'm referring to here he's just a high level with wex which means he has high movement speed in combination with his phase boots so he gets around the map very quickly Next up here, Sumail actually TP'd bottom to potentially look for a fight, and I want to show what he does afterwards, because this is the most important part of Wex Invoker, in my opinion. Even though it's unbelievably basic, it's a fundamental that I think people lack that genuinely holds them back, and that's the reason why people struggle on Wex. He misses the gank, and what does he do? He just simply hits the lane creeps. You sort of have to do this, 
right? Because if you do not, you're going to fall behind. It's really, it's really, really that simple, right? And now we actually managed to find a CM kill. That's fantastic, right? In general, this, this ended up working out a lot better than... At first look, it probably wouldn't have seemingly worked out that well because, you know, they knew he was there, right? He farmed the lane creeps, but they stayed and that can happen in pubs. Sometimes people don't want to lead their lanes or they get caught up doing certain things. So yeah, don't always feel like if you gank and miss the gank, you'll never get the opportunity. Sometimes you just got to stick around, farm the lane creeps and wait. Next up here, I want to talk about a very important concept, and that is of casual harassing. Now, this is something I see Topson doing the most out of any player. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of players do it. It just, Topson comes to mind because when he's playing Monkey King, I've literally seen him ult someone he definitely cannot kill, and I feel like he would know. And the purpose of it is it scares your opponent, it forces TPs, like, it, it genuinely makes people TP to your lane, creating a lot of pressure on the map. And of course, it burns the enemy's resources. And with Wex Invoker, this is particularly optimal as he throws down the, the EMP right as the tornado's about to hit. Because it burns their mana, right? Like, not only is this just simply, you know, a pretty good gank, but now look at this Pango. At least he has bottle charges and a stick. But still, now he's going to have to burn all of them, which is, you know, more than suboptimal. All right, cool little play I want to show here is how he actually maximizes efficiency on the Tornado. So you're noticing that he's currently on Majority Wex right now. This is going to allow him to be on very high movement speed. It's a gajillion ores because of Chen and such. But this is how you get max value from the Tornado. You want to walk into melee range of anyone who you want to cast on. This is, this is how you do it. It's very difficult because it can get you put out of position sometimes. But he gets into melee range, and when he's in it, he can go for the two-man tornado, which then manages to clip the CM as well, right? Which is going to do a quite a bit of damage, considering she's just so low HP at this point in the game. Then he also puts the EMP right in between them. It doesn't hit the CM, but, you know, in general, really nice EMP to disrupt the fight. Just to talk briefly about his, his skill build, it's actually a bit different than some other Wax Invokers that I've seen. Uh, I recently watched Abed play Wax Invoker. He left Aquasa level 4, so there's definitely varying skill builds, but for the majority, you typically want to put the majority of the points in Wex and not max out Quas, just for the fact that it it amplifies your EMP by a large margin, right? If you look at the EMP stats, it gets all the way up to 625 mana burn, which can be the entire mana pool of a lot of heroes, right? If we look at Bloodseeker, whole thing. Grimstroke, basically the whole thing. Pango, whole thing. Magnus, whole thing. And that's how good this spell can be. Now, for the early game with relatively low points in Quas, I mean, not maxed out, it's very important that you're throwing down the EMP as you Tornado. Otherwise, it's going to be late and potentially not hit. So as we look at this fight here, he's approaching. He's staying in the back line, right? Positioning quite well. Sees a little gap here to get a two-man EMP Tornado combo. Doesn't hit the Magnus, but regardless, he throws down the EMP early to make sure when the Grimstroke comes down, it hits him. Right, and now we can look at the, the, the Grimstroke. Luckily, he has a wand. Otherwise, he would have completely zero mana. Yeah, there's nothing too too complex about Wex Invoker. You sort of just want to stay in the back, get off cold snaps, get off EMP tornadoes, and right-click people as much as you possibly can without overextending. In addition, if you aren't familiar with this combo in general, when you put an urn on someone and you cold snap, it takes the cold snap, right? Urn is an item that does tick damage, meaning that it takes cold snap. It's a very convenient combo. And finally, at the end of the fight, you notice he's paying an absurd amount of attention to where the next lane creeps are and where the enemy is. So he sees the Bloodseeker bottom, he manages to get off a very clean TP, and with the Wex movement speed as well as phase boots, he's able to catch up to the Bloodseeker, hit him with the Spirit Vessel Cold Snap combo, and finish him off with a Tornado in melee range. Why is that important? Why did I want to show that? Well, in particular, I want to show that he very often casts Tornado from melee range. I see a lot of invokers just chucking this thing out, especially on Wex, when like they're a gajillion miles away. If you miss the spell, you're losing one of your three main core spells. You have to make sure every single spell hits. And yeah, this game was kind of just a brawl fest, interestingly enough, but for Wex Invoker, you really like that because it keeps up your urn charges and your hero has essentially no downtimes. Wex, I mean, EMP and Tornado and Cold Snap all have less than a 30 second cooldown, meaning that you can take a fight whenever that is up. And, and yeah, I think that's the main benefit of Wex Invoker. Like, you can have this hard carry specter, or, you know, in this game, they have a gyro that pairs well with it, but you can have a hard carry who needs to farm all game, and you can essentially fight all game. Um, and that's kind of what he does here, right? He has only 72 CS. However, that's quite high for 15 minutes on a hero that has 5 kills and 11 assists. Also considering the majority of those creeps are definitely lane creeps. Here I want to make a point about relative positioning that I think a lot of players make the mistake of. You cannot chase with your spells when they're on cooldown, right? And what I mean by this is do not run into your spells. So he breaks a smoke here accidentally. Or at least I think he knew they were there. And when he hits this Grimstroke with the Spirit Vessel cold snap combo he understands that he has no emp and tornado so what does he do he doesn't run in and auto attack this guy because he sees them around he backs up you have to do this when playing invoker i see a gajillion players just running in and they get caught up in their spells and they die it does not work it does not work 
Okay, you, you cannot play like that. You have to stay in the back and kite in and out, right? It's okay to auto attack people like this CM because she's out of position, which she might do, right? Or this, you know, this Bloodseeker at some point. But his patience and his good positioning allows him to get optimal spell usage. And yeah, that's about it. I'm just going to show off a couple more fights and briefly talk about them. But hopefully you have the gist of Wex Invoker. It can be sort of s simple to some extent, but it, it mostly comes down to the positioning and very interesting playstyle that this hero actually has as he reinitiates into three heroes. Manages to get a double kill. That's just a male play right there if I've ever seen one. But yeah, really pay attention to your positioning and, and make sure you're working towards your 15 talent because the 15 talent is the major spike of Wex Invoker. This talent is broken. It is broken. At some point in Dota, it's going to get nerfed. This talent will get nerfed. It brings Cold Snap down to a 5 second cooldown, which makes no sense. Considering that Cold Snap lasts for 6 seconds, you perma Cold Snap people. Or do you just have it going on multiple people? It's brutally broken. And in combination with the Spear Vessel, right, which is a 7 second cooldown that lasts 8 seconds, you can constantly Cold Snap Spear Vessel people. And it does a lot of damage. And I mean a lot. And you notice within this fight, if we look at it, he's just constantly Cold Snap... <laughs> Magnus is not happy, but he's just constantly cold snapping and spear vesseling people. They, there's nothing they can do about it. it. It just disables you. Like, a lot of heroes can't even cast spells. If you get this combo on an Earthshaker, he, he basically can't do anything. It's that good. And you notice he can go on this Pango now, hits him up with the spear vessel combo, goes for the, you know, the, the cool Sunstrike play. But, I mean, you're everywhere. This combo does an insane amount of damage when you're 15. It's on a 5 second cooldown. It makes no sense. It's that strong, and it's why I want to make this video. And that's going to be all, folks. They managed to take the victory in 23 minutes. And I want to make sure that you understand a lot of it came down to his very nice rotations in the early game. But specifically his landing stage. You have to make sure you're mastering that idea of hitting people when there's no last hits. And getting the last hits in between. And it might seem self-explanatory. But trust me. A lot of players struggle with this. And you might too if you really look at your replays. And if you can fix it and become very efficient at it. You will become one of the most dominant mid players in Dota. And I'm very sure of that. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please do like, subscribe to help our channel grow. Let me know if you're going to try out Wex Invoker or, you know, if you're really scared of this hero because he seems complex. Honestly, if you want to get introduced into Invoker, I highly recommend you try Wex because it is generally simple. You only have three main spells for the majority of the game until late game when you pick up your Ags. Don't fear too much. It's, it's kind of a nice introduction to Invoker, I'd have to say. Tired of being held back by your team? At GameLeap.com, we have pro guides covering some of the best heroes in the game to solo carry your ranked games. As well as a course specifically covering the mid lane role. Click on this link right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount and start your journey today.